great day for work here at the Happy Healthy Workplace Podcast. I'm Kimberly Ficklin, your host. And every week we talk to professionals just like you all around the world because we want to find out what they do to create a profitable business, the kind of business where people really want to work. Hello, hello, and a happy, healthy day, everyone. Today, our guest is Scott Coe. And Scott is a creative strategist and the founder of Color Space. Now, Scott began his career working as a business analyst on projects for major retail chains in Australia and the UK. However, it was his passion for human behavior, innovation, and social impact that saw him later joining public value consultancy Cube Group, where he went on to work on major reform projects for the Australian public sector. Ever attuned to creative opportunities that make an impact, Scott saw an untapped opportunity to connect local artists and businesses in a way that make positive impact on workplace mental health, all the while supporting Australia's flagging art industry. In 2017, he founded Color Space, Australia's first certified visual arts social enterprise that has since gone on to bring local art and talent to major banks, tech firms, and government offices alike. Their work in raising awareness on the mental health benefits of art has culminated in the recent transformation of Liverpool Hospital in NSW into a rotating gallery. In addition to running Color Space, Scott is also a speaker, advisor, and coach, leveraging his diverse experiences to help people create meaningful, human-centered change. This is going to be a great conversation, so let's jump right in. Well, welcome to the Happy Healthy Workplace podcast, Scott. Hello, thank you so much for having me here. You are so very welcome. I do appreciate you coming on. I'm really excited about our chat today because we haven't yet discussed on the podcast art and color in the workplace and why it's important. So this is going to be a really great topic that I know a lot of people are going to be interested in. I think that we always see art. Art can be something that we put in the workplace, not just to inspire creativity and to create community, but also to inspire nudges and cues in the workplace, right? So that every time we walk by something, we're inspired by the way that it makes us feel. So first, Scott, let's get started by sharing with us What got you started with what you do now and why you believe it's so important? Yeah, absolutely. So for anyone listening, my name is Scott Coe and I'm the founder of Color Space. Color Space is a little social enterprise I started about three years ago. Prior to that, my background was actually as a management consultant. So I used to be one of those people that would work in an office. And within that role, I was often in a innovation, creativity type of a space. But one of the things that I really noticed about the environment that we worked in at the time was how fixed the environment really was. The only thing that changed in the space was this one guy that would come once a month and change fake flowers in the corner, like in the reception area. They were hyper-realistic fake flowers, but fake flowers nonetheless. And it was just tucked away and no one really noticed it. But the art that was on the walls never changed. And it was interesting because as a business, we were a innovative, cutting edge, sort of leading thought leader type of a space. But the site that greeted people whenever anyone walked into the office was, here's just something that's really conservative. Here's a piece of color that's on the wall. And so when I talked to people and said, hey, what can we do about this? Can we change it? Can we source some new art? The conversation was always, oh, it's too hard, we don't know, so many people have to approve of it, and so on and so forth. And that always struck me as interesting. At the same time, I also had a bunch of artist friends who were sort of talking about how difficult it was to get art out there. It was expensive to exhibit art there. Opportunities were few in terms of real opportunities to get the physical, tangible art out, as opposed to, say, getting it out on Instagram, for example. And I just thought, ah, what if there was something that I can do here? What if we could look at the space that we work in a little bit differently and start to change it around? What if we could turn a workspace into a bit more of a gallery space? 
But it's not just about the art. And this is the thing that I've really come to learn over the past few years and has been the thing that I'm on the biggest bandwagon about, which is that the art in a space is not just as a decoration, which is, I think, where a lot of the focus tends to be. Our logos are red, our, our carpets are red, our walls are red. Let's get a nice red piece of artwork in here. And instead, it can represent more than that. And so that was the genesis of the idea. What if we could bring art in to change it around, to make it into space that can change regularly? And as a result of that, also create opportunities for local emerging artists. Wonderful, Scott. That is a great reason to get started. It seems that you were inspired to do something that other people hadn't really thought of in the workplace before. So that's interesting that most people wouldn't look at that space and think the way that you did about art. I like what you brought up, not just for decoration, because I'm sure that there's a lot of workplaces with art in them, but they just go and get stuff to put on the walls. There's no conscious decision of what's going up there, why it's going up there, what it is being used to inspire, right? Yeah, that's exactly it. I think for the longest time, art has been, especially for workplaces, has been relegated to the idea of decoration, which makes sense. With interior designers, for example, interior designers might look at a space and talk about themes and everything is geared towards that theme. But in many ways, if we take a really big step back from it all and look at ourselves as human beings, we don't exist in fixed environments, right? Like, I mean, even when we talk about our broader evolution, the environments that we're in change constantly. And yet it seems to be that we go into a workplace and that's it. You're getting this one fixed workplace and this one fixed environment, which is a space that we spend probably more time than we do at home. Although in current COVID situations, I think everyone's spending time at home. But in the previous world where there was everyone was in a workplace, that's what had happened is like, here's a fixed space. Yeah. And like you said, it's mostly filled with plastic plants and not a lot of design. Again, just things thrown up on the wall. So I know that when workplaces do consciously make a decision to put artwork up and they do it in a way to inspire their employees, just like in episode two, we talked with Pat Welch from Bolly Welch. And one of the things in the 25 plus things that you can do to rock the socks off your employees that she shared with us was that she has local artists come and place their art on the wall. And it's not just anyone. So it's not anybody can just go through, but they make a conscious decision of what type of art goes up there and why and who they're going to support, right? So that that way it's inspiring everyone. Let's talk a little bit about from a leadership perspective, What is the role of art in the workplace? And so you talked pre-COVID because we were all going into the workplace. Now we're not, especially in a post-COVID world. Thank you for that question. I think that's a really fascinating question. An important one as well from that leadership perspective because the world's changed. The future of workplaces has changed. So it's important for us to think about that. With something like art, perhaps a better question to start off with is what is the role of the workplace? When we did our research with our clients and prospective clients, the thing that most business leaders would say about a workplace is that first, it is about conveying a message. It is always about that. It's about saying who we are and how, and the type of business that we are and the type of people that we are to both customers and staff alike. But then secondly, it is about creating space where people feel comfortable. I saw a recent update that you shared, which talks about the type of culture a workplace needs to cultivate and one's sort of trust of psychological safety. And I think these are all really, really important. And so from a leadership perspective, it's about saying, well, the workplace, it is a really important tool. There's a lot of subconscious cues that can influence a person as they're in a workplace. So what does that look like in the future? With art, This is one of those things where I think it's very easy to be able to dismiss the impact of art because it's so subjective. And I think especially in the world of modern art and modern fine art, there is a bit of that divide of, I don't know if you saw last year, there was a piece of artwork that was a banana stuck to a wall and that sold for about 120,000 US. And people could go and actually eat the banana and (laughs) replace it with another banana. And people might see something like that as frivolous 
And so I think that's where art, if it focuses on that, then you lose a lot of the benefits that come with art. And in fact, if we're talking science, it's the last year the World Health Organization released a sweeping study across all these individual pieces of research, about 3,000 pieces of research were considered for this study that basically said, yeah, art has an enormous impact on mental health. But not in that sense of if you just look at it, it will therefore or magically make you better. But it plays that subtle longitudinal impact on people who are in the workplace. So if we then cast forward to the future of the work environment where people come in on a perhaps a little bit more sporadically, then what does that workplace look like? And how can we as leaders create more engaging spaces? I mean, people are going to be socially distant. So that means we're going to have to, as leaders, do a little bit more to close that distance right? that is enforced by the physical social distance. And that's why something like art, whether it's something that's consciously chosen, whether it's something that just changes on a regular basis, that's one of the ways of bringing people together and creating that space of psychological safety, but also of creativity as well. Yeah, that's very interesting. So when you're working with someone, Scott, how do you decide with your client, what is the right art for their space and Mm. why? Yeah. So we have a, I guess, a bit of a different approach to this because the nature of our service, by the way, is that we change the art around every three months. So that means it's not fixed. The other part of what we do is that we curate the art for our clients. So it's also not something that's chosen by the clients. I mean, they do get to veto if there's something that is drastically out of line, but for the most part, we actually minimize some of that decision-making for them and say, you know what, we'll look after it for you. We do understand what it is that they're looking for, first and foremost. So if, for example, in your office, you say, I I really can't handle portraiture, I don't like people looking at me, that's fine. So we're not going to curate that. But everything else, we would almost surprise you in a little bit of a way. And we basically say to clients, don't stress too much about exactly what you're going to get because this isn't about giving you something that everyone 100% agrees on. Art is subjective. In every rotation of artwork, some people will like one and some people may not like the artwork, but that changes. And what becomes really interesting for us as we've observed through what we've done is how much the culture has changed for the clients that we've worked with. Like the first couple of collections of artwork we bring in, we usually sort of cater to what it is that they're looking for. When people start to get used to the idea that art can change and the environment can be a little bit dynamic, then we start to bring in works that they never would have said yes to. And that's been the really interesting part because we then observe how the culture changes over time in a workplace. One of the things that I think we really enable as a result of this is this concept of creative collisions. Have you come across this concept before? I have not heard of that. Please share. So with creative collisions, this is like the water cooler conversations. This is like when you and I are on our way to the elevator and we just have a quick conversation. Oh, what are you working on? What am I working on? Oh, I didn't realize that. And you have these little moments of spontaneity that can occur. Or when someone overhears two other team members talking about a problem and realizing that, hey, we can make an impact there. These are not really often talked about, but is a fundamental part of company culture. And is one of the things I think might start to be missing out on during COVID. Because whenever we have these say Zoom calls now, it's very focused. We're talking about this, there's an agenda, that's it. But there isn't some of that creative spontaneity. And so with something like art changing around in a workplace, it creates an opportunity or creates another opportunity for that. And so I want to share one of the greatest, most sort of rewarding experiences that I had through doing color space. One of the workplaces that we work with, every time we change the artwork around, their staff would invariably start to rock up to work dressed like the artwork. And so they would then take photos of that and share it in their Slack channels. And it's created this wonderful opportunity for people to engage and have a bit of fun with each other. And that really only happened because art was not seen as a decoration. It was because it changed. It was because it's more than art. 
at this point. And so that's, I think, the really important aspect that art enables. And that's something that we always say to whoever we work with. It is the art, but it's also sort of not the art. It's the broader aspect of what art can be. Yeah, and I think that sometimes people might struggle with that because not everybody is really into art. Maybe they think they're not, but if there are things that you walk by every day, you may be inspired by something you never thought you would be inspired by before, right? So let's talk about being a leader in the workplace. How should a leader influence the design of a workplace and their business post-COVID future? Yeah, so I think for a leader, it really is thinking about what is the type of space that we want people to come back to. I'm going to reference a couple of businesses that had already been doing this pre-COVID. Basecamp, for example, and I'm pretty sure Trello as well. So these two organizations, their teams are pretty much working like 70, 80% remotely already. And so their workplace was not there for people to just hang, but it was there for people to come together to enable some of those creative collisions, to enable people to be able to meet face-to-face and build the human interaction necessary to connect people. And so what they've done in spaces like that is they've actually invested more in the workplace. They realized that, for example, they used to have catered lunch on every Thursday which sounds amazing unless you don't go into the office on Thursday, in which case you miss out on Mm -hmm. all that as a staff member. Mm -hmm. So therefore, they said, you know what? We should make this an offering every day. And that means for staff, whenever they come into the workspace, it's like, wow, what an amazing place to come and visit. I feel like everything is in support of our team. And so as leaders, that's what we start to look toward. When our staff come into the office, What type of space do we really want to have for them? And what kind of message do we want to give to them? And so within that, with something like art, again, it's not specifically saying it has to be a specific piece of artwork, but it's what the art can enable. And it's what that message might say to the staff that every time they come in, the environment looks like it's changed a little bit. That's where I think the role is. But I think there's one more thing in here that I do want to touch on as well, which is Post-COVID, one of the big things that I think is really important is the need to be able to support local and to be able to support our local community. I think COVID has really shown that the, like, the global supply chains and how we do business from a global level can be fought sometimes. And so by looking at the workplace in a slightly different way, I think we can also do this to create more opportunities for local artists as well. So this becomes one of those simple win-wins that I think leaders can do. We can make our workplaces look amazing because I think that's important. It engages staff and we know that there's science behind that as well, improves mental health and well-being. These are two amazing wins for a business. And then thirdly, by doing this, we're also creating opportunities for local artists too. So I think these are things that leaders can consider, not just in art, but in every part of the business as it pertains to the workplace. Yeah, that's great. Again, going back to the local, like I said, Bolly Welch, that's what they're doing is using the local art. And it is inspiring. And it also, I think she had mentioned for her workplace that it makes them feel like they're more at home rather than at a workplace because it would be kind of like having art in your home, right? Like a lot of people do. So yes, she felt she was creating a space that was more home-like rather than office-like. That's right. And I just picture this scenario where Everyone's coming back from COVID. You come into an office and it is just warning signs everywhere. We've been stuck at home for probably over three months now. And so we're surrounded by things that are warm and familiar. And so to be able to go from this into what would essentially be like almost like a hospital clinic (laughs) at Mm -hmm. this point, Mm -hmm. you know, there's masking tape everywhere at the moment, 1.5 meters apart. There's signs everywhere. And so I just think uh, there's there's some opportunities here. There's going to be a lot more walls in terms of partitions. Mm -hmm. Why not fill that with something else? Why not use that as a way to bring a bit of that warmth and color? And then we haven't even touched on color therapy and the impact that color can have on people's lives, right? Those are all things that can be made possible through something like art. Yeah, so touch on that for us then, or at least elaborate a little bit more about it. 
at the moment, there's an opportunity where offices are going to be even more stark. There's going to be more partitions up to try and make the workplace a bit more safe to minimize the risk of contagion. However, rather than just thinking protection, we can do a little bit more than that. What if we can bring a bit of art into these spaces, put some art on these walls? Because the impact of color and color therapy is something that is really important and that can have a benefit on the people who are returning to the workplace. I just think of the type of examples where, let's say in a city square, in Melbourne, where I'm from, we at one point had to install these concrete bollards in the city streets to prevent people who might sort of flip the switch and decide to go on a driving rampage. So it's a security thing. However, they were pretty ugly. They were just big concrete blocks. Didn't take long before people started to paint them and to do all sorts of crazy, artistic, creative things to them. And now they stand out for being creative. They don't stand out for being an eyesore. And I think that's the same sort of principle that I think as leaders and as workplace designers, we can look into that, that these are not just safety, but opportunities also for creativity. Yeah. And there are also opportunities to create community. Obviously, you know that, but I mean, just like you had said before, where people are talking, you said it was the creative collisions, or we call it water cooler talk. But I think that's really interesting because we do, for lack of a better word, we collide with our employees all day long in the restroom, on the escalator, during lunch, and we're having conversations. So I think that bringing art into the workplace is just one more form of allowing a communication style that doesn't presently exist. That's right. And one of the other benefits of art is because a lot of it is thematic, because there are stories to share, it's a way of bringing new stories into a space. I'm not taking anything away from plants. Plants are great. We know the science behind plants, but plants are also plants, right? It's a plant. It's green. It's great. Like it has one specific function. But art can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. And that's the type of thing that allows people an opportunity to engage over. I would contend that there are more conversations to be had over, hey, what did you think about this piece of artwork that just came in, as opposed to, what do you think of this plant? <laughs> I just think that there's more, <laughs> you know, there's, there's more opportunities there. Like, again, I love plants, but really a plant <laughs> is a plant, right? <laughs> That's a great, and I love that. That's so true. You're right. It's just, they're kind of boring. You wouldn't talk <laughs> yeah. long about that plant. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've got plants at home. I talk to them sometimes, but, <laughs> and then I realize I need to get outside. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you know, a lot of times on this podcast, we're talking about creating space for employees to be open and honest and have more communication. Um, this is just another way to do that because people often are asking, well, how do I create those spaces? I do talk about my coffee chat where you provide a space every morning and you ask a question that's just kind of wacky. You can actually find it on one of my podcasts. I don't remember 25 icebreaker questions. And then you create a coffee chat every single morning. And it's just silly, like what's your favorite color or what would you wanted to be when you were a kid and things that are really safe so that you can work into conversations that are a little bit more deep, right? About emotions. How are you feeling? Is everybody doing all right? And have people feel safe then? Well, this is just another way to create that space. In my opinion, this is another way to create that space because you would bring the art in and then you could create the space for people to have a conversation about the art so that it wasn't just only creative collisions that had them inspired to speak about it, but actually maybe an art club or, you know what I mean? Something like that where people can get together and actually have that conversation about the art, how it inspires. Not only that, but I even go deeper in that they could have a conversation about whether that art, is that right for our workplace? Is it not? What would we rather see? You know what I mean? And start to actually have people have an idea of what they would like to see in the workplace. Now you come in and you do your program every 90 days and that's great, but there may be a time when somebody's like, look, I think we've got our art community down here. And I think we all know what we really like in this space. And so can you get us these things that are going to stay here because they really inspire us? Do you ever find that to be the case or do you really buy into that it should be ever-changing? I don't necessarily have a recommendation for this. I think both are appropriate. I think if a client 
knows exactly what they're looking for after they've seen a lot of artwork, then we're more than happy to facilitate that through. On the other hand, from a leadership perspective, if my goal is to create a dynamic environment, we may not necessarily want to fix something in place. And it might be that there is one space in a business where it's always dynamic. The role of that space is to be dynamic. And for other, the team of people might actually say, you know what, we've settled on the style of that that we want, the type of story that we want to represent, and that's something we have fixed. And that's where you see things like murals that Mm. come up, where Mm -hmm. people have gone, you know, we know exactly what it is that we want to put in place here. I do also want to circle back onto something that you mentioned before, which is about those types of conversations and the icebreaking. I think there's another subtle thing here that with something like art, because it's objective, because not everyone will like it, it can also be a great little training ground for conflict and dispute and discussion about disagreements. And so by having opportunities where people can go, hey, do you like this? No, I don't really like it. Oh, what? Why? Why don't you like it? I really like it. And then we can still go about our own way. And it's pretty innocent because it's a piece of artwork. But that exercise can then help us get better at conflict resolution for when we have serious things to argue over, to debate over. That's one of the other subtle things. When we change the works around and when the environment is dynamic, we're giving more opportunities for that type of discussion, for that engagement. And one of the things that we say to everyone that we work with, we're not here to, again, make everyone happy. Like where this is about saying we're here to enable discussion and to enable engagement. And in order for that to happen, it's not going to be a situation where everyone is going to get something that everyone is able to tick off on. Because then all we'll have is the most conservative, the safest, quote unquote, artwork that no one is going to notice. Yes, agreed. And not have that conversation. I love how you did loop that back into that conflict resolution. It is a nice general thing to talk about that doesn't spark up so much passion that people can listen to each other. So I really do love that you tied that in there. That to me makes a lot of sense. And I hadn't thought about it before, so I'm glad that you didn't point that out. No, thank you. One more thing that I might sort of add on top of that is the creativity aspect, which is how does art really enable creativity, right? Because this is businesses talk about the future of work and how creativity is going to be the thing that is going to hopefully save us (laughs) as Mm -hmm. the robot overlords take over. But what does creativity really mean? Because I think a lot of people think it is artistic. I think a lot of people think it is creating something out of nothing. But often it's not, right? I think the exercise of creativity is trying a lot of different things, being okay to fail at them, being able to play. And so again, there's a subtle reinforcement of something like art where it's not meant to be perfect. And that's okay because creativity is not supposed to be perfect. perfect. Yeah, I love that. That is beautifully said. Wonderfully said. I really like it. Okay, so Scott, we are here once again on our closing. First of all, this was a great conversation. It opened up a lot of thought processes that I had not previously thought of. And I'm pretty sure that the listeners will also be very impressed with the conversation we just had. This is just a conversation that most people aren't having. So you're almost like an enigma in the world of the workplace. Thank you again for coming and sharing with us. But in closing, Scott, is there anything that you think needed to be said that we did not say? I think there's one thing that I think ties the whole thing back together, which is we know that coming out of COVID, there's going to be a strong emphasis on mental health, on well-being. And I think these are really, really important conversations to have. But I think to be able to be in a place of having good mental health and well-being means creating a space that enables that. And that means having the ability for people to be a little bit messy, especially given that we've all just come out of home. It means having a spaces where we can be a little creative, where we might need to be a little bit distracted sometimes because that's real. That's a real experience. No one is perfect. No one is focused all the time. 
And so we need to have that little bit of relaxedness of being able to make mistakes and being able to play and doodle and be able to create. And as a result of that, we will be able to have better mental health and better well-being. In order to facilitate that, there's lots of different ways. Obviously, we're here talking about art. So that's the hill that I'm dying on today because <laughs> art is representative of those. So for any leaders out there or any workplace designers and or like interior decorators, when deciding on a piece of artwork, I would only encourage, think a little bit less about it matching the decor or the brand identity and more about what type of message the whole thing really represents for a business, for a workplace. I love that. That's great. Be a little bit of messy because everybody's looking at art for the decor. Again, you've just brought up an entirely different conversation about art that we just are not having because it is usually like that's blue and the chair's blue and the rug is blue. So we need to have something that has blue in it, right? What if everything was blue and you had something that was bright yellow in your picture or bright red or something that inspired something completely different than everything else in the room? I really appreciate that being your last point here that you drove in. Scott, thank you so much for being on the podcast with us today. I know that our listeners are going to get a lot of great information out of this. It was my pleasure. It was really lovely talking to you. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, you are so welcome, Scott. Well, this is the close of the Happy Healthy Workplace podcast. Please check the show notes for links to Scott and all of his works. And if you love what you hear on this podcast, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us on your favorite podcast player. This is the close of the Happy Healthy Workplace podcast. I'm Kimberly Ficklin. Have a happy, healthy day. That's a wrap for today. The Happy Healthy Workplace podcast is now complete. Be sure to subscribe and join us weekly for secrets, solutions, or strategies that help you create a profitable business where people really want to work. This is Kimberly Ficklin, wishing you a happy, healthy day.